This video will look at secondary storage. Now in the previous video we were looking at primary memory. Now this, uh, these are memory devices which are directly accessed by the CPU. We looked at the RAM, we looked at the ROM. Um, now the issue is that sometimes uh, we want to have programs stored on our computer uh, when the computer switched off we want our documents uh, to be saved our homework that we've been working on uh, to be saved um, overnight when the computer's not running and if we were to solely rely on these primary memory devices that we've already talked about um, we'd have issues because the RAM is uh, a volatile memory device it needs electricity all the time to be able to store data as soon as that electricity goes uh, the data's lost so that's not very good if you want to be storing um, your documents um, for a long period of time even when the computer's not on and the ROM although it can store data when there's no power so it's non-volatile uh, you can't actually write to it so that's not very good as well so this is where secondary storage comes in so secondary storage um, there's three main technologies uh, which um, secondary storage devices use that's magnetic storage optical storage and solid state uh, storage um, and I'm sure that from these pictures you will recognize many of these devices um, so you've got your hard drive your standard hard drive which is a magnetic storage device up there in the top right uh, you may well have um, used CDs DVDs or blu-ray discs um, certainly for um, films and you've got solid st uh, solid state storage so you've got like your USB memory sticks you've got flash cards uh, solid state drives all of these devices uh, you've probably come across so let's have a little look at how these um, different technologies work so magnetic storage all these storage devices um, are made up of magnetized uh, or magnetizable material and this magnetizable material can have elements that are magnetized therefore representing um, a one uh, or be demagnetized and represent a zero optical storage uses light um, lasers to burn pits into the uh, material of the disk um, and the different arrangements of these marks um, give us our data so when writing to optical media laser burns pits into uh, the land so the shiny part of the CD or DVD and then when reading the optical media uh, the laser will shine a light up onto the surface and if it reflects back perfectly it knows it's hit land and therefore that would be read as a zero but when it hits a pit uh, then it doesn't necessarily reflect back in the same way it knows that it's um, it's hit a pit it will represent a one so the different arrangements of these pits and lands gives us our data and then you've got solid state storage so flash um, storage devices um, and they work by having a large electrical current forced uh, forcing electrons through a barrier and trapping them into position and the different arrangements of these electrons gives us our data so now let's have a look at a few examples of different storage devices um, so in terms of magnetic storage devices uh, there's the hard disk now many PCs across the world uh, contain a magnetic hard disk um, and they are an excellent choice because they've got large capacities um, so therefore they can hold um, large files they can hold programs they can hold the operating system uh, they've got very good um, read and write speeds uh, they're not the most portable so they are heavy uh, they're not that durable either no, dropping one will uh, damage um, the device um, they can be used over and over again so they are very reliable um, and they actually you know, per megabyte they are pretty cheap so they are a very good choice for um, for PCs magnetic tape something that uh, they used to use for um, audio file storage um, back in the 80s um, but they do still use it now um, and they've got very large capacities as well they're very good for backing up data um, they do have very quick write speeds but very slow read speeds and the main reason for that is that they um, the data is serial access so it means that you have to um, read the data from start to finish so if the data that you're looking for is right at the end of the tape then obviously uh, you would need to actually work your way through the tape um, to get there uh, they're fairly small they are portable therefore 
um, and they're fairly durable as well, can be used over and over again, and they are very, very cheap. Now in terms of optical storage, there's uh, CD-ROMs, and there's DVDs, and there's Blu-ray discs. Now in terms of a CD-ROM, um, the capacity is not that great, about 650 megabytes. Um, the read and write speeds are okay, they're not incredibly fast. Uh, they are very, very portable. They're also exceptionally cheap, so if you had um, some program that you wanted to distribute uh, to the masses, then putting it on a, a CD or a DVD or um, Blu-ray would obviously be a variable, a very sensible um, option. In terms of reliability, um, CD-Rs can only be written to once. Uh, they can be read over and over again, but CD rewrites, so CD-RWs, can be reused. Um, and I mean, the main difference really between CD-ROMs, DVDs, and Blu-rays is their capacity. So a CD-ROM, as I said, is 650 megabytes. A DVD uh, is sort of four and a half gigabytes and a Blu-ray would be about 25 gigabytes. So in terms of flash memory, um, you've got your solid state drive. Now these are slowly replacing hard disks. Um, the reason why they haven't completely re replaced them now in modern PCs is simply because they're exceptionally expensive per gigabyte. Um, but the prices are coming down. Um, they can be used over and over again, um, they're very durable and they're also very portable. So unlike a hard disk, uh, because there's no moving parts, um, that can survive uh, lots of bumps and knocks and things. Um, and they can be pretty small as well um, and therefore quite good for devices like laptops. Capacity is pretty good um, and getting better all the time. And certainly its uses to, to store the operating system, programs, large files, and so on. Um, again, in terms of flash memory, you've got SD cards. Uh, so these are um, pretty good capacity, again, for the size of the device. Um, so sort of 16, 64 gigabytes. In fact, that's probably um, a little bit out of date now. Um, certainly 128 gigabytes you can get. Um, speed is fast, so the read and write speeds are very quick. Uh, very, very portable because they're uh, very small. And again, because there's no moving parts, they're very, very durable and they're very good for mobile devices like cameras and phones. Uh, they can be used over and over again. Um, with solid state drive, it must be noted that there is a, a limit as to how many times it can be used. It's a, probably 100,000 or so, um, but uh, it still does have a lifetime. Um, and again, per gigabyte, it's expensive. You've also got your flash memory sticks, your USB memory sticks. Um, again, similar to um, an SD card, it's fairly small, it's got good capacities, uh, it's very quick, it's very durable, um, but again, it's per gigabyte, it's pretty expensive. Now, there's also um, storage devices which may use um, magnetic technology, could use solid state technology. Um, but this device and network attached storage is really just a hard disk uh, which is attached to a network. So this can be really good if you've got several computers in your household, for example, or in an office, and you want them all to be able to access uh, the same hard drive with the, uh, the same, so they can all access the same data. So um, really, a NAS drive is just a, a, the same um, sort of capacities and, and uh, as portable as a hard disk, as durable as a hard disk. Um, as, a, as reliable as a hard disk, but it also, uh, because it connects to the network, um, there's other things to consider. So although the hard disk might have high read and write speeds, it depends on the speed of the network as to how quickly you can get your data. But it's really good for just storing uh, different programs that different uh, computers might want to make use of, um, or certainly having a central storage for your files. And then you've got cloud storage as well. So this is online storage. So don't um, think of this as uh, something incredibly special, it's not. It's just a, a load of um, servers with lots and lots of um, hard drives, for example, uh, that can uh, store your data, but the idea is that they're always online. So just like a website you can access 24-7, um, this will be um, a, a server that is um, online that you can access 24-7 simply to store your data, um, and therefore, it is, um, well, in, in a way, highly portable. It doesn't matter where uh, you go. As long as you can access the internet, you can access your files. Um, the speed, again, depends on uh, the speed of the network, the bandwidth. Um, the capacity is pretty much unlimited. Um, you pay for, for, for what you need. Um, 
and it's it's fairly expensive depending on the service uh, but the nice thing is that most of these um, cloud storage companies will give away some um, capacity for free so you know SkyDrive um, or uh, Google Drive might give you um, several gigabytes um, for free 